What's happening guys? We're back. We're getting started on the wiring today. All right, I'm sure this is everybody's favorite part of every YouTube build. Uh, we're gonna start wiring. Uh, I'm kidding, it's the most boring part of any build. Uh, there's not a whole lot to show here. It's just gonna be a whole bunch of cutting and splicing and probably a lot of head scratching. So we need to shorten up our wiring harness. Uh, the proper way to do this would be to cut the ends off and repin them, but I didn't bother to buy a pin kit because it's like 300 and some bucks. So that's kind of an end game. We'll, we'll do that if we love this car. Uh, instead what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're just gonna cut and splice. So we're gonna cut the centers out of these wires and then I got a butt connector kit. So we'll be able to just splice them together, make them a little bit shorter. I am gonna try to be a little bit strategic on where I put my, my butt connectors so that in the future I can cut them out and just put a, a plug in there. So that'll A, get rid of a whole bunch of butt connectors and B, it'll allow us to separate our wiring harness out into, into sub harnesses. So we can have like a, a harness for the motor sensors and a harness for the transmission and a harness for the body and whatnot. Have all these sub harnesses that all click together. Uh, but we don't have those plugs right now because I was too cheap to go out and buy them. So we're just gonna splice them together and, and hope we're in the right spot. Uh, our lengths are gonna be a little bit arbitrary. We're gonna mount our ECU in this area, but I'm not 100% sure exactly what the orientation is gonna look like. So I'm gonna make all my wires a little bit long. Uh, I don't mind looping my wires a little bit and, and zip tying them out of the way, uh, but I'd really hate to have to cut it out and splice in a, an extra section. So we're gonna make them a little bit long uh, and then we're just gonna kind of methodically tackle that big old rat's nest of wires. We're not gonna do anything with the fuse box today. Uh, it's just gonna be sensor wires for right now because this motor seems to be made out of sensors. So that'll clear up about 80% of our wiring. So it's not gonna be a real uh, interesting episode for you guys, but uh, it's gotta get done. So let's grab our tools and get to work. So I didn't read my labels. One of these didn't have to be cut. It was just a fused power connector. There's no pin on the other end. Um, whoops. Nope. I'm calling what has to be the most last minute audible I've ever called on this car. We are not gonna do anything that I just talked about. So I did the first butt connector uh, crimp job here. And I hate the way that it looks. I hate how bulky it is. Uh, I think once we get, you know, 30, 40, 50 of these things all kind of bunched up, it's gonna be just this big ungainly piece of garbage. So we're calling an audible. We're not doing the crimp connectors. We're gonna solder them together. Uh, I know that a lot of people are gonna say you never solder on a car because the vibration breaks the solder, etc., etc., etc. I've done it for years and I've never had any issues with it. So we're gonna solder all the wires together, heat shrink them. Hopefully it'll look a little bit better than this uh, this system, and uh, hopefully it takes up less space. So I'm gonna grab my soldering iron, some flux, and everything, and then we're gonna start all over again.
All right, this is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would be. Um, we got the majority of the sensor harness done. We got the, uh, the injector harness done. That part was actually pretty easy because we were able to just put the harness out on the bench and shorten it all up by, uh, I think we took a uh, two feet out of it or a foot and a half, um, and then just do them all the same. So that was actually pretty convenient, but the roadblock that we're running into that's really sucking up time are these thick wires. Uh, there's one of these on the uh, cam angle sensor, throttle position sensor, and the MAF. And what these are, these are actually uh, shielded conductors, we'll call them. So they have the, the plastic insulation on the outside, but then inside of here, there's actually a foil wrap. And then our conductors are inside that foil wrap along with a non-insulated shielding wire. So I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that, but there's actually three different conductors in here. So it's for anywhere where we're gonna have a signal that might be prone to electrical interference. Uh, these wires run right next to all the injector wires and all the other sensor wires and stuff. So uh, we want to keep that shielding in place as much as we can. So to shorten these, we actually have to cut them in the middle and then fish the, uh, the ECU pin wires back and shorten them that way. Uh, it takes like 15 to 20 minutes just to do one of these. So that sucked up a bunch of our time, but uh, we got them all done now. So the next step is we're gonna move on to the igniter chip wiring. Um, this guy, still plugged in. We're gonna move on to this guy, it's our igniter chip. Uh, it runs our coils. The SR20 does have a coil on plug system but it's kind of an older version of it. So we have to have this funky igniter chip thing. Um, I don't know 100% how it works, but there's five wires that go in and only four wires that come out. So it's gotta be doing something. I think there's some capacitors or something in there. Uh, so we are eventually gonna get rid of this, I hope. Uh, I got my eyes on, I think they're, I think they're the, the 350Z coils. They're basically a direct plug and play on the SR20. All I gotta do is flip one of the wires on the, the plug that goes into each uh, coil, and then we can get rid of this igniter chip. But I don't have those right now, and I don't have the budget to just go out and buy them right now. So we're gonna find somewhere semi-convenient to mount this for right now, with the intention of getting rid of it in the future, and then uh, shorten up the wires accordingly. So let's give it a whirl.
All right, we got most of the ECU plug wired back together again. Uh, this is by far the handiest tool in my toolbox for wiring. It's the pinout diagram. Uh, if you're doing anything with an ECU, Google it, get yourself a pinout diagram. It saved me years, <laughs> years of work. Uh, but yeah, so we got most of the ECU wired together. Uh, we've hit a bit of a roadblock. I can't find my uh, O2 sensor pigtail, uh, so I can't plug that into the ECU and lock down that bank of wires. So we're going to press pause on this for right now. Uh, I'll probably come out tomorrow and find that pigtail. It's It's gotta be in a box somewhere around here. Um, I know I have it. So I'll find that, get that finished up, maybe clean up some of this wiring. So that next week when we come back, we can actually hopefully mount the ECU somewhere in here and then move on to the power distribution wiring. So that's things like uh, getting the alternator hooked up, getting the batteries hooked up, the starter, uh, maybe running some of the interior wires for the ignition, uh, running wires back to the fuel pump, things like that. Some of the, the less computer e wiring and more just the basic 12 volt wiring. So that's the plan for next week though. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching you guys. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button. Go check us out on Instagram, Left Foot First Media. And we'll see you next week. I'm out of here.